All right, hello everyone and welcome to another video. I'm here in Counter-Strike 2 and today I'm just gonna go over a couple of ways to make practicing in CSGO a little easier, specifically for grenades, but also just in its current state without the workshop maps being integrated. Uh, I will walk you through just my current workaround for getting into a workshop map for those uh, mechanical reps uh, alongside that grenade practice. So uh, we'll dive right into it. Uh, as you may know, Counter-Strike 2 added this practice feature here. Uh, with a few a few settings on the side the grenade camera being the new uh, one that everyone is talking about so we'll definitely utilize that in our practice you don't have to select it here when launching in if you're using the practice config that I'm going to show you today uh, so these settings are um, inconsequential if you're using this method but they are there and it makes uh, practicing grenades and getting into a practice server much more accessible for for uh, anybody but if you do want to take a step farther we're going to do that here. Just keep in mind, if you are someone who used to use the console to just load right into a map uh, for D Inferno or whatever it is, that does present some issues here. And that is this. When you load into those servers from the menu, oftentimes it it will still give you this error once you're loaded in and try to uh, enable SV cheats. The cheats cannot be enabled on this server. Uh, my workaround for that that I've found through testing has been using this to get into the first map and then after that if you wanted to switch and continue to practice you can do that so long as you don't switch maps with the console be uh, after turning cheats off so you'll want to leave the cheats on uh, enabled on the server if you are jumping around maps to practice grenades on more than one map so what you're going to do is load in through the practice mode and by default with none of those settings on the side it is just going to like treat it like a regular practice competitive game um, but because I have that custom config I can type this command uh, execute or exec is the actual command that triggers that but it executes a file and the name of my uh, practice config is just prac so when I want to execute it I just type exec prac in my console so quickly before I show you what I like to do with this custom config and the ways that it helps me practice different things uh, I'll just show this on screen for a moment. You guys could pause and I've added in comments to describe each line. Most of them are self-explanatory, but I just wanted to have a plain text description on the side. Now that's all well and good. We've got our practice server running, but before I show you how that all works, let me just quickly run you through how I got this set up. It's really simple. It's really easy. What you're going to want to do to start is go into your Counter-Strike 2 on your Steam library and right click to go to properties and installed files browse and that takes you to the top level of folders which actually you can access your old csgo files from here as well as your cs2 uh, but for now this is how you get to your cs2 files game csgo cfg and that's where we're going to be working today and we're just going to be creating two files in this folder the auto exec.cfg which uh, the naming does have to be exact for this one uh, as the game will only execute this automatically if it is named properly with the right file extension. Speaking of file extensions, if you don't see it here, the .cfg, make sure you click view at the top and check that box for file name extensions. But what we're going to do is right click over in the right side or at the bottom after uh, wherever you can find an empty space or simply just click new item up here and text document. And you're going to rename the whole thing, including this file name extension, which is the most important part. You're going to rename this to auto exec.cfg and you're going to do the same for prac.cfg and you're going to hit enter. I've already done this. I'm not going to enter with the new names, uh, but you're going to want to edit this type of file. That's the .cfg in your notepad. So if you don't already see the icon for your notepad here, you're going to want to open with and click notepad. And it may prompt you to always open with Notepad, and I would highly suggest doing that as it's the easiest way to edit your Counter-Strike config files. Uh, but with that said, once those are made and you open it with Notepad, it's much, it's easy to, oh, whoops, I only have my auto exec open. Let me grab my prac. It's really easy to hop in and edit, it, edit these. And uh, I will have a plain text version of both of my files in the description below if you wanted to copy them for reference or just to, uh, as a starting point uh, before you go and change it yourself, that's totally fine. Uh, but yeah, I'll have these accessible down below. So uh, this is the auto exec. This just basically binds things that aren't 
directly in the CS uh, settings menus. And that's just, uh, this is just the current method that I've found for doing this and making sure that they're permanently bound. Uh, I, I'm sure there are other solutions out there in the Counter-Strike community, considering how versatile these like configs are and how you can execute them at any time from your uh, command line or your console here. Uh, so there's definitely other solutions to this, but for me, I like keeping it in my auto exec, especially in CS2. It's such a small amount of commands compared to uh, the config management of, of Counter-Strike Global Offensive. So uh, this is my current solution for that. So obviously my no clip bind does exactly what it sounds like. It, it makes me not clip against any walls or any air or any gravity, whatever it is. I can fly around free. That's super nice to toggle on and off with my F1 key. Uh, we also have rethrowing grenades. Um, so the way that I find this is the most useful is for ironing out really good pixel perfect grenades. So if I were to line my crosshair up between these two rocks and use this line on mid just to the left of it so it doesn't hit the corner as a reference, it'd be hard to know for sure. Uh, like the, the thing on the ground helps a lot. But if I wanted to know if someone like really tight against this corner here is going to get hit, I would hit the bind that I have for rethrow grenade and it's going to throw that and boom, I know that's a pixel perfect flash and let's test it on this angle too because I wanted to hit both. All right, that's a pretty damn good flash. Maybe I could get it tighter to both, but who knows that that is the use of the rethrow last grenade. It simply just allows you to refine and test specifically flashes in my opinion are the easiest and most uh, useful to test with that bind but you can also rethrow smokes and any other types uh, of nades with that and stand where they land if you need to test damage or what have you also i have a skip smoke grenade button so if you throw a bad smoke while practicing for a left side smoke and you want to really quickly test without the distraction of the last one i have bound that to my period key to skip that as you know, I have the crosshair extender alias that I uh, briefly highlighted in that auto exec. And it, it does exactly what it says. It changes the crosshair size to 500 and changes it back to my setting from before. So the way I use this is for grenade lineups like this. Uh, the arch smoke lineup that I like is up from this side of the window all the way until the right arm of my crosshair is between these two little antenna arms uh, at the front and back. So basically in between all of these little sideways antennas, uh, I'm going to keep my sideways arm. So you can see it, it's doable like this. I can, I can wing it. And this is a, a little bit more of a forgiving lineup with how much uh, vertical forgiveness I have. Um, but I always, always, even for medium difficulty lineups where I'm trying to like connect uh, imaginary lines, I really recommend using a crosshair extender. It just makes it so much easier and so much more consistent. And uh, yeah, just makes it fast. You can be faster without losing your consistency, essentially. So that is why, how I use my crosshair extender alias. I use it quite a bit. So say I have this jump throw grenade that lands in arch, and I want to save this exact point where I'm looking for later. Uh, this is more important for really specific lineups, but can be useful for just tracking the grenades that you want to keep track of type of thing. Uh, but if I want to recreate this, I can click my uh, get position button that I've bound and let's just, we already see on the preview that's going to land, but just to verify, that's where it's going to land. And if I want to recreate that after I've moved away, because I clicked that bind, I can go back into my console, see the last time that it printed this set of commands, which is the set position and set angle commands. These get me exactly back where I was. I'm going to go ahead and copy these. And I'm going to paste it. And what that did is it put me exactly back where I was. And all I got to do is click the grenade and jump throw and look at that on the preview. It's going to land exactly where it was, which is really helpful if you want to go back and track these uh, without having to memorize the lineup immediately. Like you can find the constraints of the lineup and the forgiveness of the lineup later. If you want to just like, oh, I found a really good arch smoke. I'm going to save it and I can revisit later. Uh, the get position can be really good for that. All right, and now let's mess around with the binds that I've added for bot management. I have the plus and minus button for adding singular bots and subtracting to get rid of them all. Once a bot is added to a team, if I hit my numpad star and look at the ground where I want it to stand, I can add a bot pretty much anywhere. So the two ways I like to use this bot placement 
functionality is actually just uh, one for testing the visibility of angles. So if I wanted to see what that looks like coming out, I can just place a bot wherever it is and get used to, to seeing a CT model or a T model in that position. So that's really helpful just for getting used to visibility of things. And then the alternative way that I like to use it, you can with the SV show impacts penetration setting on, you can already see the damage applied to a back layer after it goes through this one. But for just that added bit of uh, responsiveness, you can actually see the separated damage of what it applies on that. All right, that does it for my practice config and the uh, auto exec commands that come to use in there. Uh, the last thing I'm just going to briefly touch on is the workshop map. So uh, I will have a link to Mr. Uletical's aimbots CS2 version in the description. He has a test version right now. There's not many uh, CS2 um, workshop maps at the moment, but for me personally, I really like to have a bot arena to hop in and just practice my mechanics. So I've gone through the steps of getting this working. Uletical has all of these steps here in on the website that I'll link below. Uh, for getting this installed but long story short it's very similar uh, it's very easy you go right into your counter-strike 2 folders the same way I showed you at the start of the video but instead of CFG we're just gonna go into maps and you drop the file that you get from this website into maps uh, and in order to launch that file because of the current state of workshop being uh, locked out of the main game all you have to do is go back to this uh, right-click properties menu that we have for counter-strike 2 and you're gonna add this this command slash launch option into your launch options and that just makes it so that you can't access the valve hosted servers uh, in this state so it limits you to just offline servers and workshop maps uh, and i assume this is just to prevent certain uh, settings carryovers or uh, exploits that people have found in the workshop system but this could be something else entirely but as for now in, or in order to hop into you, your workshop map and practice uh, on that map, you do need to add this, and then you'll have to restart your game and remove this uh, when you're done. If you do have other launch options here, remember it's just a space to separate them and dash to start with no spaces between that and the uh, launch option. So because I'm already launched with that launch option in, it should work for me. So let's try map aimbots and see if it boots me. Awesome, so it successfully booted me in. Uh, and it should do the same if you get through those steps the same and add that launch option. And what you're going to do is on this particular map, if this is the one you choose to install, you're going to join CT and in the new menu up here, you're going to restart the game once because there's only about five or six bots at the beginning. But if you do restart the game once, uh, just due to the state of the current uh, test version that we have here, um, it will go ahead and add more bots as you can see right here, 10 instead of basically half of that. My personal preference for setting this up for practicing is closing three sides and just leaving one green by clicking the all on all three. And then I close the ceiling perimeter and the floor just so I can wander out there and get a little more dynamic with, with where I'm aiming instead of just being in this range. I can come out here and kind of practice a little more of my tracking aim as I run around them type of thing. Uh, so that is how I set this map up for my mechanical practice and I just do my counter strafes and my aim warmups in here. All right, I think that's all I have for you today. I hope that between the practice config, the auto exec and the getting workshop map set up, you guys find some value here and are able to practice a little bit quicker and, and more efficiently in Counter-Strike 2. Uh, I'm excited for this new era of Counter-Strike and I hope to see you guys again soon. Peace out.